Welcome guys, part seven of the Monster Golf Cart build, and today we're gonna make this thing run and drive. Stay tuned. All right, so let me kind of walk you guys through what I'm thinking here. So we're gonna use this. Um, I pulled this out of my scrap heap. I don't know, this is like three quarter inch uh, steel tube. I'm gonna use this as the shift lever. It's nice and tall and will give us plenty of leverage to shift and it'll put the clutch in a nice place to uh, grab onto it. So we're gonna use this uh, for that. It's gonna run through the floor and this is the original shifter assembly off of the motorcycle. Now, what I did was I drilled through it um, and uh, to basically make it a little bigger. And we're gonna use this. This is solid 5 8 inch rod. I drilled the hole out to fit it. So it's a nice tight snug fit. We're gonna run this between the frame rails and what's gonna happen is this will be, this could be our shift fulcrum. So when you hit it forward, it'll shift. When you pull it back, it'll shift. Um, but that rod is gonna run between the two frame rails and it's gonna pivot on that. Now, the way it was set up on the original bike this little double threaded piece is really, really small. So we're going to obviously have to cut this just like we did the other one uh, for the reverse linkage and extend it back. Um, and then I'm going to cut off this uh, little foot peg and we're going to weld that, that large rod onto it uh, to give us a large um, lever action. Firstly, we got to figure out where to put this underneath the quad. Uh, I got a few ideas, so let's go down underneath and take a little look-see. Okie dokie, we're down here. As you can see, um, I remounted this. This is our little shift lever arm. I uh, still need to tighten that down a little bit. But basically there's a clear path. And this is where things get complicated because we have our brake MC down here. We have our um, throttle spring over here. We got just a bunch of shit going on right here. And so what I want to do is I want to put the shifter right here next to the exhaust. Now it is going to be kind of tight against the driver's leg. But as with a lot of the other packaging kind of constraints on this golf cart project, we just kind of have to do the best we can with what we have. So the plan is to run that steel bar through the frame rails here and here, and then basically just use like a cotter pin or something to secure it on the outsides. But I want it to run behind the exhaust because I want to put the shifter basically right here with the fulcrum about two inches down. Um, so I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to measure off this distance and then... Uh, drill these holes and then we're going to cut out the floor right here uh, in order to make all of that work and I may end up redoing this exhaust shroud partially because I don't like the way I built it and partially because we're going to end up cutting this a little wider and I might just make one single piece um, to take care of all of that but we'll see first we got to basically drill holes for our rod to go through and uh, so that we can get it in here and get the final measurement and get it secured So we seem to have run into our first problem. This was a great plan, except this fulcrum point needs to be somewhere down here. Because if I try to line up a guide rod, you can see that there is no chance because of that bottom bolt. There's just no way of me getting enough angle um, without it having to hit something. Now we could do some janky thing where like the rod is kind of bent or whatever, um, but really all we have to do is move this thing down about two inches because I really do like having this mounted in the frame um, and it's a good pivot location we just need to move this thing down so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this off uh, and weld in like a little two inch spacer and that should give us more than enough because that'll put it somewhere down here which will give us a pretty straight line which will give us a, a good shift feel so this is why a lot of times when you're fabricating custom stuff like this uh, you, until you get in there you know you really don't know all right so we got our rod in place we've got this where we want it we got our two little two inch extension or two and a half inch extension excuse me and so now if i get this this is our, this is a 12 inch extension rod. And if I can, basically you can imagine, there it goes running from pivot to pivot, center to center. And this is gonna be totally perpendicular. We're gonna move this so that it lines up, but basically it clears the bottom of the case. And this will um, give us plenty of range. And then we're gonna have to figure out a way to fixate this in place and put the lever at the right angle so we can move all the way forward and all the way back. And if we need to, 
because uh, we don't want it to be hitting the seat uh, when you're downshifting or upshifting or whatever direction this ends up being. So, next we got to weld our little extension. So here's our completed system. Got shift lever here, got shifter arm here. This has movement. So now we just gotta figure out how we're gonna secure this rod in place, secure this guy in place, and then we can weld on an arm and hope that we have enough lever because this is really, really tight. Um, yeah. So what we did here is we cut these little grooves and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these um, snap rings and this size down here, I don't know what size it's supposed to be, but let's see, three quarter inch snap rings fit really nice and snug and they'll keep everything from moving left and right. Kind of a pain to put on because you have to do them one at a time as we slide it in, but uh, it will keep everything in place and we've got the little spots locked in for our uh, shifter assembly as well. So the next thing that remains is we got to uh, install the actual shift lever itself. And I am going to try to make it one piece with that, try to weld it all in there. Um, so we're gonna see how well that's gonna go. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here. Got our shaft down there, it's secured left and right. <clears throat> There's a little bit of wobble, not a ton. But there's our linkage down there, we can shift. You can see it working. Um, I shifted up and down through all the gears. We're in neutral right now. But what I did was I cut a piece of this pipe on here, hammered it on as a spacer. I don't remember what diameter this pipe is, but it's not the right diameter for this. But this is our clutch. And you can see, let me bring you around to the other side and I'll show you. But the clutch is hooked up. So our clutch is, of course, down here. And you can see when I pull it up, clutch works. And what I also did was I connected this right here. This is the parking brake assembly. I won't do it because it's kind of sticky. This gives us a second mechanical parking brake um, if the hydraulics aren't holding. I don't know if they will or not. Generally, um, disc brakes have a bleed off, unlike drum brakes. So the hydraulic pressure may not hold after like five or six minutes. But this will always hold, which is why we used the rear caliper. Now we could totally wire up the clutch switch and the parking brake switch if we needed to. Um, I think we have already bypassed at least one of those things. So we'll probably end up just yanking those switches out of there. But that's basically the last major system. Uh, I gotta put some oil in it. We gotta put, um, get our throttle stuff figured out. And of course, this weekend I gotta machine down some gears. Um, and we should be driving this thing by next week. All right, so yesterday I had a chance to go to the Top Secret Machine Shop and machine these. These are the center pieces for our weld-in uh, sprockets. And basically I turned them, uh, face them down um, so that they are the same uh, thickness as this and the gear faces are flat. And so what I want to do is, as you can see, there's two sets of cutouts here. Um, these were actually drilled and tapped for what are called retainer bolts. Um, and as you can see, one of the retainers lines up with our um, with our cutout for the uh, key stock, and the other one is just for stabilization. And since we had to face off these and they're no longer usable, I'm going to try to drill uh, to drill and tap two more. So what we have over here is we have the larger one, the one I'm mostly interested in using. And and if I take this out, you can see where this was drilled. Uh, for the key stock. What we're going to do is we're actually going to drill um, the opposite of this one first. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this perfectly down, line that up so it's perpendicular, and then we're going to uh, drill and tap a hole right there. 
um, and it's a coarse thread M8, I think, is what the, the tap is. Okay, so we've got our sprocket uh, welded on. It's not fully welded yet. It's just uh, mostly tacked into place. I just want to make sure everything was perfectly square, and it looks like it is. So then we got our bearing assembly back in place. We got our brake rotor in place. I got the caliper off because it's, it's sticking a little bit. Um, because all of this is so new. So now that we have this chain uh, cut down the length, you can see the going one link deeper would have been uh, too tight. And so we had to go one link looser. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build the tensioner assembly that's gonna come up and it's gonna force the chain like this. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us a good, nice, tight chain pinch. Um, so we're not s slipping or jumping teeth. But I wanna show you guys just how close everything is down here. I mean, it fits like a glove, but you know, a few teeth more would have probably been uh, been too much. Um, so this is I'm really happy with the with the ratio that I chose here. So next step, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a piece of tube steel straight out uh, underneath the chain, and then we're going to run another piece of tube steel straight up. Um, this is basically the tensioner assembly, and the way it works is that there's a spring in here, and this flexes up and then wants to snap back. So we're going to do is this actually will i can't do this with one hand but basically this this part up here when it's fully decompressed will be perpendicular like where my finger is and this will be vertical so it's going to be pushing up almost what like two inches up uh, another video here we've got a lot done basically at this point the golf cart is running and driving shifting reverse works super duper happy um, in the next episode we need to basically finish up a bunch of little things so I've got my little mini list here um, I realized today that I still need to weld up the engine mounts um, I did not weld that plate in all the way I only tacked it in and I only noticed that when I started hitting the gears and the whole engine goes badoop, 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 every time you shift. And I was like, shit's not good. Um, I really need to lean out the carb. It's running way too rich. I think the jet in there is almost 10 sizes too big than it should be. So I need to go in and figure that out. Um, I'm waiting on the brake switch uh, in order to make brake lights a thing. Um, I need to build a new block off plate for the floor. And we need to put in new wood for the bench seat. And I would like to get the body back on. So in the next episode, I would like to clean up all the little details, um, get at least the rear half of the body back on, potentially do uh, the front half with the uh, headlights and all of that stuff as well. Um, and then that should be it. And then there will be a final video where we go and drive this thing around and see how it actually performs. Um, I tried, I tested out the brakes. Um, it's hard because it's got an open differential. So when the uh, wheels are up in the air, it just free spins. But our brake does work and it does stop it really, really well, uh, at least the, the rear axle assembly. So hopefully that translates into good braking on the ground as well. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you like this channel, please subscribe. As always, I'm Max. This is MaxWorks. Peace.